Firstly, I'm absolutely fine. Uh, but this weekend, whilst I was celebrating my birthday with my friends, I was on the receiving end of a premeditated, targeted attack. Uh, I was physically assaulted and my friends trying to protect me were also assaulted. Over the last year, I've been on the receiving end of a very deliberate and systematic campaign by far-right activists. Now, it's pretty clear why I'm a hate figure to these people. I'm, I'm their antithesis. Uh, I'm gay, I'm a socialist, I'm anti-racist, I'm anti-fascist, and I'm proudly part of the anti-fascist movement. But I don't want this to be about me. Well, I'm a white guy with a media platform, and there are so many others in this country and elsewhere, members of minorities, who are being attacked similarly by far-right thugs without getting headlines, without getting interviews. The far-right is on the rise. It's a growing menace. It's its strongest now since any point since the war. Emboldened by the likes of Donald Trump and the rise of right-wing populist movements. And we can see far-right violence, whether it be the assassination by a far-right terrorist, the Labour MP Joe Cox, the attempted far-right murder of the Labour MP Rosie Cooper, the Finsbury attack, and numerous other far-right terrorist attacks, particularly in the United States, targeting Muslims, migrants, Jewish people, and opponents of fascism. Now, when we talk about Islamic fundamentalist terror, we ask who the hate preachers are, who's radicalising them. We need to start asking those questions about far-right violence. Actions have consequences. And what we are seeing is the radicalization of far-right extremism by mainstream politicians and mainstream media outlets. Now, we can't be scared by the far-right. We've defeated them before, and they will be defeated again. But we can't just call out examples of far-right thuggery and pretend they exist in a vacuum, because they don't.